welcome you inside episode two of the Ken Spark Show, recapping and reviewing a 47-23 Carson Newman victory over Lenore Ryan's Bears. I'm Adam Cavalier, alongside the head coach of the Eagles, Ken Sparks. Coach Sparks, congratulations on win number 301 and moving to 2-0 and on the season, and more importantly, 1-0 and in sack play. Well, it was a great effort by our guys, uh, good game planning by our coaches, and uh, and really excited about uh, the response that we got from a whole lot of kids. And so um, uh, progress, you know, the, the we want to be on a progress process. And, uh, and I think uh, that was good, uh, another step uh, Saturday. You take another step defensively too. You give up some yards, but an opportunistic <clears throat> defense forces five turnovers, sets up 24 points. Uh, what was the key defensively to force those turnovers against Lenore Ryan's flex bone? Well, of course, uh, they were playing a quarterback that only played one other game, and so they were handicapped. Uh, uh, you know, their starting quarterback that started the first ball game uh, was still on the shelf with, con with a concussion, and so, uh, uh, you know, but some of the, some of the turnovers were by contact, and uh, we we uh, had a little better contact game than we did the first ball game, and and uh, we we were a little better blockers and tacklers, and that was good, and uh, and I think uh, great to see the defense run up and down the field with a couple of fumbles. It was really exciting. How much did the bye week help? Well, I think uh, I think no question when you when you line up against a wing bone or a flex bone. Uh, you know, although we do get to practice against ourselves mm -hmm. as far as option assignments, but uh, they, with their formations and everything, give you a lot of different adjustments. And they'd been two different offenses in two different games, so we had to adjust to two different offenses. And it was uh, gratifying to see how our guys, uh, in a lot of situations, responded. The Eagles led at the half, <coughs> 23 to 10. We'll talk about the first half highlights after this. This is the Ken Spark Show. Back on the Ken Spark Show, Carson Newman victorious over Lenore Ryan, 47 to 23. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside the head coach of Carson Newman's football team, Ken Sparks. Coach Sparks, uh, you break out to an early lead, score the first 20 points against Lenore Ryan, and it starts with a Brandon Baker 28-yard touchdown run. He had a fantastic week in Week One against Glenville State, and he starts off again taking a pitch around the left side. What what was successful about the running game? early on against the Bears? Well, I think uh, anytime you're successful in a running game, you better look at those guys that's doing the blocking. Uh, I think we're very blessed with an offensive line that's doing a great job for us. Uh, and I, they had some breakdowns. Uh, Brandon had some breakdowns in getting us in the right play, and that, that, um, that shouldn't be. Uh, but he's, um, he's a quality kid and uh, a great leader for us. And his, uh, you know, he's, he, he's a 10. He's one of those kids that's a 10. Uh, you know, he's uh, uh, sometimes his ability is less than that. Uh, but when you got a 10 heart, you can overcome some rest of it, some of the rest of it. We had uh, some running backs that went down. We had a uh, Brandon Baker went down with an AC problem. Uh, uh, you know, so uh, Tyron uh, didn't have his best game. We didn't block as well as we needed to with the running backs. Wide receivers did some great blocking, really good blocking. And so uh, uh, the biggest thing that bothered me about it was that we were swapping field goals for touchdowns. And, uh, you know, as too many times that uh, we were in the red zone and it's not like us to be get down there and not score uh, a touchdown and we were kicking field goals. Thank goodness a guy named Kurt Duncan uh, <laughs> was, was four for four. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, his dad, Allen, holds the records for all-time points in a ball game. He kicked five field goals against Kentucky. And then uh, here's Kurt, kicked four field goals and never had many extra points. And I think, uh, I think they kind of tied uh, his record down there and Kurt's record here, I think, for total points. And so um, I thought that was an interesting sidelight. We'll talk about Kurt in a, okay. in a, in a little bit. We'll All touch right. on him a little bit All more. Right. You brought up the red zone. Lenore Ryan coming into this game stingy, stingy red zone defense. Six times opponents had made 
trips into the red zone. Only twice did they come away with points. Against you, though, you score four times. How, how much of that was Carson Newman? How much of that was the Bears? Well, I, I don't think they gave us anything. I think it was our kids that were, uh, uh, you know, I think we I think we had to earn what we got. And uh, and our, our guys uh, just really did a good job up front. I wouldn't any question about that part. Carson Newman leads it at the half, 23 to 10, and we take a look at the first half highlights. 35 left on a rolling clock first quarter, scoreless, but Carson Newman driving to put six on the board. Split back veer, Haywood under center. Spins left, pitches left to Baker. Baker takes the pitch, bolting down the near sideline at the 20. Baker at the five, shakes free of a defender, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Baker sidestepped a man on his way to the end zone and finds Pater from 28 yards out. It's the Eagles six and Lenore Ryan nothing with 10-18 left in the first quarter. And they can miss from 36. Week one. Spot down, Duncan's kick is high. It's end over end. And it is through. Barely clears the crossbar. And the split back beer with Haywood under center. Second and two from the Lenore Ryan 22. Handoff up the middle, Hibbett. Hibbett with Green in front of him. He'll dash down the near hash mark and into the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Andy Hibbett strikes for six for CN and Carson Newman has a 16 to nothing lead from more or less the middle of the field on a blustery, beautiful afternoon here at Park Tar. Duncan, the kick on the way. It is straight, it is true, and Carson Newman has a 20 to nothing lead, 20 nothing lead over the preseason sack favorites. Jones under center. Behind him is Robinson. The right, Beatty. Jones fakes to Beatty, now keeps it himself over the left side. Jones has loads of space. Jones will reel off a run down the near sideline and skate for six. Touchdown, Bears. Lenore Ryan cracks the scoreboard. A 28-yarder. Duncan has the ball spotted far side hash in the wind, a slight breeze at his back. Duncan boots the ball and splits the uprights. Kurt Duncan stays perfect. Those are the first half highlights. This is the Ken Spark Show as Carson Newman leads Lenore Ryan 23 to 10, headed into the locker room. And coach, you, you mentioned it earlier, but a big reason for that, your kicker, Kurt Duncan. He doesn't smash the 50-yarder in the first half, but we'll go ahead and talk about it. When he it, talked about it in the post game, he said, I prayed it right through the uprights. <laughs> What's it mean for you for a kid like that to glorify God after he has a great performance? Well, Kurt uh, and a whole bunch of our kids understand where our strength comes from. Uh, anytime we start thinking that we're the answer, we're, we're headed in the wrong direction. And, uh, and uh, Kurt's a great example. Kurt may be one of the more respected guys on our football team because when he speaks, it's usually the truth. It is the truth. I mean, he uh, uh, and we enjoy some of the stories about Kurt. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, he grew up in Africa do dodging spears and, do and dodging bullets and dodging uh, lions and wild animals. So, uh, so we're really uh, proud of Kurt and all the things that he has accomplished uh, in his life. Uh, uh, has very very high grade point average. He's got a purpose of where he's headed, and and uh, he's just fun to be around. The 50 yarder. What was we the wore him out yesterday too. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> not, not only does he kick the four field goals, the five extra points, 17 points, school record for a kicker. Chances are he'll lead the nation in scoring among kickers uh, after week three of the season. Uh, but but when you think about it, and you send him out for the 50 yarder. What's the, the mentality? What's the thought process behind that? Well, uh, confidence, number one. Uh, a little bit of a breeze behind him, number two. Uh, I think he's very capable of doing that. It wasn't, it wasn't where we thought we were rolling the dice at all, you know. Uh, and, uh, and then it was third and long, I mean fourth and long, and uh, I think we'd just gotten a five-yard penalty. It made it uh, really difficult for us to do what we wanted to do with it. So. Uh, 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 Kurt came through. He did, he did what we needed him to do. And I was glad to know. I thought it's a 49 yarder, but I'm glad to know it's a 50 yarder. Um. Well, we'll talk about Kurt Duncan's 50 yarder and see Kurt Duncan's 50 yarder after this when the Ken Sparks show continues. the lead 
lead coming out of the locker room 23 to 10 over Lenore Ryan. The Eagles end up picking up the victory over the Bears 47 to 23. I'm Adam Cavalier, the voice of the Eagles, alongside the head coach of Carson Newman's Eagles, Ken Sparks. You look at the second half and Lenore Ryan starts to make the push. D did you have flashbacks to Glenville State when the Pioneers made their comeback? But again, you hold the opposition at bay. Well, I didn't like it, that's for sure. <laughs> and uh, probably was kind of an ugly person on the sideline there a little bit because, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, I hear people talking about momentum. I, I don't understand momentum. You know, to me, it's a figment of the imagination because um, same 11 people playing against the same 11 people. Now, I know there is change of mindset that causes one team to do better than the other team and gets on a roll. Uh, but that, to me, momentum shouldn't happen because uh, there should be enough mental toughness that you say, you know, I've whipped him before, I'm going to whip him again. You know, and that's not going, you know, and so I'm not going to let this. Momentum happens because somebody allows it to happen. And so I don't think uh, uh, we don't need to be a team basing our values on momentum. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like luck. I don't believe in it. And uh, so uh, we got to continue to to mature and grow up. And but, but I thought our kids responded great. We gave up some plays that we shouldn't have given up. But uh, uh, I liked what the offense did when the defense was struggling. I like what the defense did when the offense was struggling. I think they complemented each other very well. Now, the fact is, I think every time they scored, I believe we answered. Yes. And uh, and if you can continue to do that, then you got a chance because it keeps them from getting that whatever that is in their head that said that we can get this thing turned around. Not only do you answer, but you answer in a way that chews the clock. There, it's almost that assassin's mentality where uh, you're not going to let the other team up off the mat because for two straight fourth quarters, you've held the ball for nine minutes at, at least against Glenville State it was 11. What, what's the mentality there? Well there's no question that uh, time of, of p p possession is very very important. The fact is I heard somebody uh, I believe Tony Dungy says that that may be one of the top three or four uh, statistics that you have uh, and uh, I never have felt real strong about time of, of possession because we've always been a big play offense that scored pretty quick and as long as we score I didn't care how, how long it took. <laughs> But against Lenore Ryan, it was very important because they're a ball control offense. And uh, I watched them in times past uh, beat people with, uh, uh, you know, 30 minutes of, of uh, time possession. And uh, if you don't get the ball, you can't, you know, you can't, uh, you can't, you can't win. And so uh, it's, it's been very important for us to, uh, uh, this ball game specifically, to, to control the clock a whole lot. Now Carson Newman controls the clock and gets some big plays in the second half. We take a look at those highlights as the Eagles come out victorious 47 to 23. From half a hundred, snap down by Ray. Duncan, it has the distance and it's pure. Duncan from 50 yards out strokes it through the uprights and Carson Newman has a 16 point lead. 26 to 10. Haywood under center, second and goal. Handoff goes Douglas right side. Douglas plows his way forward. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Haywood. Keeps it straight up the gut. Churns his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. 39-23, the Eagles on top. Jones under center. Will pitch left to Whitaker. Whitaker mishandles it. It's fumbled, and Beauty picks it up on the far sideline. Beauty will go all the way. Beauty, touchdown, Carson Newman. The ball bounced right up into Greg Beauty's bread basket. And Beauty went all the way down the far sideline to score six for Carson Newman. Carson Newman with the victory over Lenore Ryan, 47-23. The Eagles improve to 2-0 on the season. Coming up, we break down Carson Newman's upcoming game against the Newberry Wolves and put the Eagles spotlight on Brandon Baker. That's after this when the Ken Spark Show returns. Welcome back to the 
Lincoln Spark Show. Time now for our Eagle Spotlight. Each week we highlight one Carson Newman football player. And this week, Roger Hoover puts the Eagle Spotlight on Brandon Baker. The M.O. is still the same for the Carson Newman offense. Pound the rock. In week one of the season, no offense in NCAA Division II football racked up more yards than the Eagles, led by the quick moves of junior running back Brandon Baker. He accounted for 219 of Carson Newman's 474 yards on the ground, scoring three touchdowns that would prove key in the 56-46 victory over Glenville State. It's a, it's a good feeling being out there in that wide, wide open. Uh, I just like I just like to be. I like to score touchdowns. I, I like the end zone. I love being in there. I love everything about it. So that's why I, you know, try not to get tackled in every play. A native of Miami, Florida, Baker is now in his third season in a Carson Newman uniform, and he is eager to bounce back from an injury-riddled sophomore year. It was a hurt. It was a hurt feeling. I, I really hate to be on the sideline and watch my boys go through what they went through. And I really wish I could play last year, but now I'm gonna make up for it this year. Baker's 219 yards were not only the most in the South Atlantic Conference for Week 1, but the second most in Division II football. For his outstanding performance, Baker was named the Offensive Player of the Week for the sack. Coming out as the first game, it was a really good experience um, coming back on the field and after missing last year. So it was a really good um, experience coming back out here. Baker was also proud to be a part of the 300th win in the career of his head coach, Ken Sparks. It was a great experience. I like I like the fact that um, he he accomplished something that not too many coaches have ever um, experienced before, and I'm and I'm proud to say that I was a part of his 300 win, and I helped you know provide a 300 win with my running abilities. Baker is one of several Eagle running backs that have shined this season, and he's proud of the progress that's been made by Solomon Duana, Andy Hibbett, and Tyron Douglas. Solomon, he he's bring he's bringing a big burst to the to the um to the team and Andy as well and Tyron he's he's going to be that dominant back every game every single play and that's what I love about Tyron he runs hard and um, Solomon as well. While he is pleased with the early season results, Baker realizes this is a long season and he wants to stay on the field. He's just staying healthy for the for the for the most part because you know last year I went through that tragic in injury. Um, but I want to work on just being a better complete back between blocking, running, catching. I just want to be, build myself to be a complete back. Now the focus for Baker and the other Eagle running backs is to continue the proud tradition of the Carson Newman offense, pound the rock. We really felt some type of way about uh, them giving us the fifth um, to win a sack. And we don't we didn't, we didn't really like that because we know Carson Newman is a top elite program and we have to get that back for, for Carson Newman and for our, for our self-motivation. For the Ken Sparks Show, I'm Roger Hoover. Thank you very much, Roger. And Brandon Baker, a part of the Newberry, or the victory over Lenore Rhyme, but you turn your focus now to the Newberry Wolves coach. And uh, you go from a rushing attack in Lenore Rhyme to a Newberry team that likes to pass the ball a bit. What challenges do the Wolves pose? Well, they're a balanced offense. They do a great job throwing and running, and they're, they're a talented football team. Uh, it's a tough place to play, uh, especially at 630. And uh, <clears throat> so it's going to be a, a, a good challenge for us to, to continue to grow and continue to progress and, and, uh, and be more and more what we want to be. And, and, uh, but uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a hard ball game, and we'll have to – from what I understand, they're undefeated, and uh, I know they're undefeated, so we'll have to do a great job of uh, preparing and have a great week uh, of um, getting our minds right and our hearts right. 2-0 are the Wolves, and 1-0 in the sack play after a victory last week over Catawba. What sort of pressure does this put on Carson Newman, or is there any pressure? Well, I mean, you know, if you're breathing, there's pressure. If you get out of bed, you know, if you don't want any pressure, don't get out of bed. And uh, so, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's, not, uh, that's not an issue. The issue is, is us playing against us, continue to get better, continue to improve ourselves, continue to get better with blocking and tackling, uh, and eliminating some of the mental mistakes that we're still making. And so, uh, again, uh, we need a victorious process to continue. And, uh, and that just means hard work and practice like we're going to play and get out there and get after it. I'm sure there's a little bit of pressure off you just because you've got Christ on your side too. Well, no question. The fact <laughs> is, uh, you know, if, uh, if we miss that scoreboard, we miss yeah. the only one that matters, aren't we? And uh, so 
Uh, there's no question about, uh, you know, the thing that, uh, that just came up, you know, after 300 victories. Uh, you know, five minutes after that's over, it's over. You know, and then so now what's left? The only thing that's left is the value of uh, dealing with people and having a relationship with Christ. You know, that's the only thing that's left. And so, uh, the, the, anybody that says fortune, fame, power, position, any of that stuff has a lasting effect, you tell them come see me. I can tell them real quick that it doesn't. So, uh, so you know, I think uh, uh, it, it's a good reminder to me that uh, things that we need to be about are things that have lasting value. And, uh, and, uh, and that's a good part about the laboratory learning like football. You get a chance to keep teaching that. And keep making an impact. Keep well, hopefully, yes, yeah. yes. Even for old people, I, <laughs> I, I told Dr. O'Brien after all that fuss he made last week, him and and Alan <laughs> Alan Morgan, that you know they keep on. They're going to make me think that I've got a future in this profession, <laughs> and uh, so uh, that would be dangerous. So hey, let's continue talking about Newberry for a moment. <clears throat> Eleven different receivers caught passes against Catawba. How do you choose who to slow down when you've got that many different weapons offensively? Well, you don't. You uh, you know, you probably, uh, it's not, most of the time the game doesn't come down to individuals anyway. It comes down to which 11 plays against the other 11 and gets the job done. And uh, the good thing of it is they can only put 11 on the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bad thing of it is we can only put 11 on the field. But uh, but that's great. And uh, And, you know, you have to, you have to make the adjustments, and Coach Clowney, Coach Turner did an unbelievable job with game, game plan last week. They'll come up with a great one, them and all of our coaches. We're so blessed to have coaches that can come up with a game plan. Coach Spark, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us here on the Ken Spark Show. You're welcome. Good to be here. Carson Newman head football coach Ken Sparks. I'm Adam Cavalier. Thanks for watching episode two of the Ken Spark Show. We'll be back next week. <laughs>